In today's video, we'll dive into how the discovery of a chemical in the early 20th century would go on to shape the fate of ecosystems, agriculture, and public health. This chemical, DDT, or dichlorodiphenyltrichloroethane, is a synthetic pesticide that started as a tool of great promise but ended up being a source of controversy, environmental degradation, and health concerns. In this video, we will explore the chemistry and history of DDT and examine how its unintended consequences reshaped global policy. The story of DDT begins in 1939 with the work of Swiss chemist Paul Hermann Müller. While working for the Swiss pharmaceutical company Geige, Müller was tasked with finding a new insecticide to combat agricultural pests. After experimenting with various chemical structures, he synthesized dichlorodiphenyltrichloroethane by attaching chlorine atoms to a benzene ring structure, producing a compound with remarkable toxicity against insects. Miller would later receive the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1948 for his discovery of DDT's effectiveness as an insecticide. Little did he know his discovery would soon change the world. To understand how DDT works, let's dive into its chemical structure. DDT consists of a central ethane backbone bonded to two phenyl rings and chlorine atoms attached at specific positions. Three chlorine atoms are attached to the central ethane group and two additional chlorine atoms are attached to the phenyl rings at the para positions. This unique configuration of chlorine and carbon atoms is what makes DDT both highly effective and dangerous. The two benzene rings contribute to the compound's aromaticity, making it stable and resistant to degradation. The chlorine atoms provide lipophilicity, meaning DDT is soluble in fats, and this causes it to accumulate in the fatty tissues of organisms, including humans, where it can persist for extended periods. Additionally, the compound's chemical structure makes it persistent in the environment, meaning it does not break down easily. This persistence would later become one of its greatest downfalls as it lingered in ecosystems, causing widespread contamination. At the biochemical level, DDT works by affecting the nervous systems of insects. It binds to and disrupts the sodium ion channels in neurons, preventing them from closing properly after an electrical signal is transmitted. This results in continuous nerve firing, leading to paralysis and death. In addition to causing paralysis, DDT's neurotoxic effects disrupt normal cellular functions. It inhibits the ability of nerve cells to communicate by preventing the proper flow of ions across cell membranes. This disruption interferes with basic processes required for survival, such as muscle movement and feeding. The insect's nervous system becomes overexcited, which is why DDT is so effective at eliminating pests. However, while DDT works quickly to kill insects, its persistence in the environment and its ability to accumulate in fatty tissues meant that animals at the top of the food chain were also exposed to harmful concentrations of the chemical. Initially, DDT was hailed as a miracle chemical. During World War II, it was used to combat the spread of typhus and malaria among soldiers. The chemical's ability to eradicate lice and mosquitoes made it a crucial tool in preventing disease outbreaks during wartime. By the late 1940s and early 1950s, DDT became widely used in agriculture to protect crops like cotton, corn, and fruit from destructive insects. Its success in preventing insect-borne diseases also made it an essential tool in many countries, particularly in tropical regions where malaria was rampant. However, the widespread use of DDT led to unintended ecological consequences. As early as the 1950s, wildlife biologists began observing the negative effects of DDT on animals. Particularly troubling was the decline in populations of birds of prey, such as the bald eagle, peregrine falcon, and brown pelican. Scientists discovered that DDT caused eggshell thinning, 
leading to eggs that were too fragile to survive incubation. As a result, the reproductive success of these birds declined dramatically and entire populations were at risk of collapse. This decline was made even more alarming by the phenomenon of bioaccumulation. This occurs when DDT accumulates in higher concentrations at the top of the food chain as larger animals consume smaller, contaminated ones. As predators consumed prey with high concentrations of DDT, the chemical built up in their bodies, reaching lethal levels for some species. This caused a dramatic decline in the number of top predators, with lasting consequences for entire ecosystems. In 1962, Rachel Carson's groundbreaking book, Silent Spring, brought DDT's environmental dangers to the forefront of public consciousness. Carson's research documented the widespread contamination of ecosystems and the devastating impact on wildlife populations caused by the unchecked use of DDT and other pesticides. Her book sparked a national debate about the safety of synthetic chemicals and their unintended effects on the environment. The impact of Silent Spring was profound. Carson's work led to a global conversation about humanity's role in the natural world and the long-term consequences of chemical interventions. In response to growing scientific evidence, public concern, and the influence of Carson's work, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, took action. In 1972, the EPA banned the agricultural use of DDT, marking a pivotal moment in the history of environmental regulation. This move was part of a broader effort to control the use of toxic chemicals and establish more rigorous standards for pesticide safety. Other countries followed suit, implementing their own bans and restrictions on DDT use. Despite the bans in many more developed nations, the story of DDT was far from over. Its use continued in developing nations as a last resort measure to combat malaria, a disease that still claims the lives of millions each year. The World Health Organization, WHO, endorsed its use in areas where the benefits outweighed the risks and where no safer alternatives existed. In these regions, DDT continued to play a role in protecting public health. Today, new strategies have emerged to combat malaria with less environmental impact. For instance, insecticide-treated bed nets are now widespread, and methods like genetically modified mosquitoes are being developed to reduce the spread of the disease. However, DDT's legacy still shapes modern environmental policy and pesticide regulation. DDT's history is complex, representing both the power and the peril of chemical interventions. While it saved numerous lives in the fight against malaria, its unintended effects on ecosystems and wildlife cannot be overlooked. As we move forward, it is crucial that we continue to learn from the past. The legacy of DDT reminds us of the importance of scientific caution, environmental stewardship, and the need for careful consideration of ecological consequences in all chemical interventions. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any video ideas, comment them below and we'll see you in the next video.